Hi everyone, and welcome to my presentation about new generation of SIG power devices for industrial and automotive applications. I am Ignacio Lizama, a field application engineer for power devices in ground semiconductor. And in the next minutes, I will present to you an overview of our latest silicon carbide devices development, showing the benefits and the improvement compared to our previous generation. Let me start by showing you the agenda of the presentation. I will start with a brief introduction of ROM. Then I will continue with our target applications with a special focus on electric vehicles. Later, I will introduce to you our latest development of our SIG devices and its performance. And finally, I will give you an overview of our expansion plan and takeaway points. So let's start. ROM Semiconductor is a well-established semiconductor company created more than 60 years ago in Kyoto, Japan, which started as a resistor manufacturer where the name comes from. Our company mission is quality is our top priority at all times, through a consistent supply under all circumstances of high quality product to the global market. On the left side, you can see roaming numbers. We are a worldwide company with more than 22,000 employees, with a net sales of more than 360,000 million of yen, which is around 3,000 million of euro. Our key product focus are IC, with the 47% of the total products. Discrete semiconductor devices with more than 38% and modules with more than 9%. And our target market are automotive and industrial. Here we can see our target applications for our newest silicon carbide MOSFET device. Electric vehicle, photovoltaic and energy storage, data center server and UPS, smart grid and charging stations, and factory automation and power supply. If we look at the automotive applications, in the electric vehicle, different technologies coexist, and the semiconductor depends on the battery voltage. In electric vehicle, we see the tendency of different voltages, 48, 400, and 800 volt, and also different applications inside, such as onboard charger, DC-DC, high voltage heater, powertrain, among others. And the right technology, such as SIG, GAN, Silicon IGBT and silicon based MOSFET will depend on the battery voltage, efficiency, and cost requirements. Here we see which is the right semiconductor for the application in the electric vehicle. On the left side, you can see how applications typical positioning based on the power and frequency. For example, the inverter located in the high power and middle switching frequency range. Seek can bring benefit in terms of efficiency, which provide advantage in the system level. Higher frequency but lower power areas such as OBC, DC, DC, where SIG is also a good option. In case of low power and low switching C frequency, like high voltage heater, IGBT is a good option, which as ROM also provide devices for this application. An e-compressor is in the limit, depending on the battery voltage, SIG or IGBT, would be the best option. On the right side, you can see in which areas technologies could be utilized considering both power and voltage. Low voltage and low frequency, we have normal silicon MOSFET. For higher power, GAN is an option. Higher power and voltages up to 1200 volt, IGBT is the device who dominate this area. And finally, for higher power and voltages, SIG is the best option, bringing benefit in the system level. As I mentioned, there are areas where both technology can be applied, and the final selection will depend on the requirements of the OEM. Now we see the matching component for their application. SIG fits in several applications, such inverter, OBC, and dc -DC converter. Also, it's an alternative for e compressors For low battery voltages and high power, such OBC, dc, -DC converter, and auxiliaries, GAN is also an alternative. IGBT has their place where high power is required as an inverter and also for e-compressor, and where low switching frequency is required as high voltage heater. Standard silicon MOSFET can be used for auxiliary applications. As ROM, we don't provide the same power devices as MOSFET, diodes, and IGBTs. We also have a broad variety of components that can be used in these applications. For example, gate drivers, chain resistors, IC controllers, among others. 
Here I want to show you our history with six devices. In Rome, we had 20 years of experience with silicon carbide, and we are full integrated production system. We control from wafer production level to the end product, as discrete bird dyes and modules. We started already in the year 2000 with our first wafer of two inch at that time. In 2010, we introduced in the market Choctibare diode and MOSFET with our second generation MOSFET, which is a planar technology with devices of 650, 1200, and 1700 volt. In 2015, we were the first in releasing six MOSFET with trench structure with our third generation, with devices of 650 and 1200 volt. And today, we are introducing our next generation, which is also a trench structure with voltages of 750 and 1200 volt. Today we have more than 40 discrete components with our second and third generation in different voltages, 650, 1200 and 1700 volt. We also provide different packages, including the advanced packages with 4 and 7 pin, where we can improve the switching transient, reducing the losses by around 40 to 50 percent, thanks to the access of the driver source pin. Now to our next generation MOSFET. Here we have a diagram of RTS on area versus blocking voltage. The black dotted line is the theoretical limit for silicon MOSFET, and the blue dotted line is for silicon carbide devices. With the introduction of super gentle MOSFET, this limit was exceeded. This was further improved when we introduced our second generation of silicon carbide MOSFET. Years later, by introducing our first trench technology for SIG MOSFET, the RTS on area is reduced by 50% compared with our second generation. And today, our fourth generation, which is also a trench technology, managed to reduce this further by 40% compared to our previous generation. That means, for the same chip area, the RTS on is 40% less, or for the same RTS on value, fourth generation chip is 40% smaller than the third generation chip, which brings cost benefits. When we compare the RTS on versus gate voltage characteristic of our third and fourth generation devices for the same chip size, we see that our fourth generation presents lower RTS on, around 40% less, which means higher current capability. And also, you can switch on with 15 volt, but you can also turn it on with 18 volt and profit from the reduction of switching and static losses. And despite of the lower RTS on, the short circuit with stand time is not compromised. For the switching characteristic, we use our double pulse test setup, as you see here. You can see a picture of our test setup on the right side, a low inductance test where the test devices are underneath. For the gate drive, we are using our simple isolated gate driver with Miller clamp, and the measurement equipment are described in the table. We measure our third generation of 40 milliohm and compare its results with our fourth generation sample, which has slightly bigger chip area. Here we see the turn on transient. On the left side, we had the results of our third generation device, and on the right side, the result of our fourth generation. The top part of the figure shows the gate source voltage. The middle part shows the drain source voltage in blue and the drain current in red, and the bottom graph shows the power losses. For the test, we use an external gate resistance of 1 ohm for the turn on and turn off. The gate voltages are 18 volt for the turn on and 0 volt for the turn off. The test has been done with a drain source voltage of 600 volt. And in this particular case, we show you the waveform of the, of the drain current close to 45 amps for both cases. We see that the gate voltages behavior are similar. Please take into account the axis scale of the plots. When we see the drain source voltage and the drain current, we can see that the DDT are also similar, in this case, a little bit higher than 4 m per nanosecond. But the DVT are different. The 4G present a steeper transient, which will help to reduce the switching losses. In this particular example, we see that the 4 generation presents slightly larger tunnel losses, just 10%, even though the device size is around 20% larger than the third generation chip. Then, for the turn-off losses, the difference is significant. The test conditions are the same as before. In this case, the DVDT of the fourth generation is significantly higher than the DVDT of the third generation, 
As a result, we see that the turn off losses are decreased by around 50%. Here you can see the total switching losses. That means the turn on plus the turn off plus the recovery losses. In this case, we are showing the results for a DC leak voltage of 600 volt on the left side and 800 volt on the right side. We see that the fourth generation has around 32% less total losses compared to the third generation. This result were obtained at room temperature. Later, I will show you the influence of the temperature. Here you see the, the IDT during the turn off and turn on transient for 600 and 800 volt for the same conditions as in the previous slides. We see that for the turn off transient, the third generation present a slightly higher DIDT compared to the fourth generation. And in case of the, of the turn on transient, both devices behave in a similar way. Now I want to show you the influence of the temperature on the switching losses. Here we have the total losses of the fourth generation at 25 degrees Celsius in the blue line and at 150 degrees Celsius in the red line for 600 and 800 volt. As a result, we conclude that the temperature has small influence at low DC link voltages in the high current range. For higher DC link voltages, in this case 800 volt, the switching losses are practically independent of the temperature. Our fourth generation is planned until today in two different voltages, 750 and 1200 volt, for a current range between 25 and 130 amps. We are also planning different packages in TO247-3 and 4 pins and SND in TO263-7 lit, and of course also in bare dice. The fourth generation devices are based on the 6-inch wafer. A detailed lineup will be released soon. From the capacity point of view, we're expanding our capacity to secure a stable supply chain. We're expanding Sai Crystal in Nyumber and Miyazaki in Japan. And a new factory, Apollo, will be opened in Jikugo, Japan at the end of this year. Our investment plan is not only for SIP devices, but also for gate drivers. Compared to 2017, we are planning to increase our capacity by 16 times in 2025 for six and gate drivers with an investment of more than 545 million US dollars. We're also not just investing in more capacity, but also in the newest technology with our fourth generation silicon carbide, which is our second trench based device. To finalize, I want to summarize some points. Our fourth generation SIG MOSFET development is completed. The experimental results show an optimization of the static and dynamic performance. Currently, we are on the final phase of the preparation of the product. And finally, with our expansion and investment plan, ROM is committed to customers to ensure a stable supply chain. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and I will be happy to answer your question during the Q&A session.